I forgot what they were thinking about. What is they uh, succeed or whatnot? And the advice basically was whatever you're afraid of doing, go do that. Because if you stay in your comfort zone, you're not really growing. Right? Right. Growth is scary. Winston Churchill says, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Mm -hmm. I'm sure if you look back at some of the struggles that you've gone through in your life, the only success you had was the courage to just take one more step. Right. Because <laughs> nothing was working out, nothing was going to work out, and all you could do was do that step, and it took courage to do that. Remember it? You cannot change your destination overnight, but you can change your direction overnight. Um, I was teaching uh, my, my son Lex there. We were doing some target shooting and uh, heavy gun, right? So he's, he's aiming at the barrel. He's like, oh, this is heavy. He's like, I'm, I'm trying to aim. He's not the like, but it's going like this. So I teach him how to hold his breath and stuff like that, right? Just small movements change your direction in big ways, right? Yeah. yeah. And then last one here says the only person you should try to be better than is the person you were yesterday. That's good. When we talk about taking care of ourselves or improving our personal growth, that's a good thing to keep in mind. One is, whatever that perfect thing is, you're never making it there until God does it for you. Yes, that's So right. your goal is, whatever was yesterday, just be a little better than that. Amen? Yes. Amen. These quotes allude to the idea that achieving success is just not a task to be completed or achieved. But success is closely defined as this continuous process of improvement. And it's less about completing and more about pressing. I use that word pressing because I wanted to bring this scripture to your mind, right? Works on me, I hope it worked on you. Yeah. Philippians 3.14 says, I press towards the mark for the prize, the whole high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't arrive. He didn't jump there. He didn't take a plane and get dropped off, right? right. But his life was a constant press towards that mark. Amen? Amen. Yes. This verse encourages us as believers just to strive diligently and persevere in the pursuit. Amen? Amen. The prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus is where we're going. Yeah. It emphasizes the importance of a focused determination and a wavering commitment to reach there. Amen? Yes. So back to this pretty picture of a hot air balloon. <coughs> Personal growth is akin to embarking on a journey where the path is winding, filled with challenges and triumphs. And it's a realization that success is not a fixed destination to be reached, but rather the process. Amen? Mm -hmm. yep. Even in moments of setback, stumbling, it's the resiliency to get back up, to rise again, armed with new wisdom, with new learnings to continue on. And that's where you transform. Amen? Yeah. So that was all just the opening to get us to how does this relate to us? If we talk about a personal relationship with Christ, it's essential to understand that our journey encompasses more than just spiritual aspects. We know, and we have plenty of examples in the Bible, we'll go through some of them, where our physical, our mental, and our spiritual health are all interconnected and they all play a crucial role. Amen? Amen. Our scripture text taught us and told us that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit and thus we have a responsibility to take care of them. Yes. So first, let's explore the importance of health in your personal growth and examining how it's all intertwined. Amen. So our scripture text, I'll read again, but it reminded us that our bodies are temples. It said, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Did you forget? Right. Right. Well, 
I feel like preaching about ice cream right now. It's like, did you forget? But I won't because I think I have ice cream at home that I'm gonna <laughs> But this is a good reminder that you do have a responsibility. Right. That you are not your own, that you were bought with a price, and therefore yes. it's our duty to honor God with our bodies. Yes. Amen. It underscores the importance of taking care of your physical health as an act of honoring God. Through scripture, there are many examples where that required work. Right? There's many standards that we talk about where, in the end, the standard and the rule, when it comes down to, it really comes down to, it's your body that God gave you. So don't harm it. So let's look at a couple of examples. We have Joshua. Joshua 6, verse 3 says, March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them, sound a long blast on the trumpets. Have the whole army give a shout. Then the wall of the city will collapse and the army will go up. Everyone straight in. I did have an idea that an easy application for this would make everyone stand up and do some calisthenics and run around the church and do some push ups and say, Yeah, you know what? When God calls you, you need to be ready. But I figured we'd just give some examples. <laughs> Amen. Okay. But have you ever tried to hold a full conversation while you're hiking up a mountain? Yeah. You ever been on a jog and someone wants to talk to you on the jog? Um, I won't point at anyone, but I did go on a jog with someone named Mr. Bob Dupuy. <laughs> and he could talk to me the whole way. And I could just not do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was there in every every fourth or fifth, you know, put down on the foot. I was, I was happy if I could just get a syllable out. <laughs> I spoke too hard, just trying to keep my, my breath, right? Control that breath. But this, in this um, story here, God commanded Joshua and Israelites to march around the city of Jericho for seven days. There's nothing deep here. But if God asked you to go march seven days around the city, let's make sure we can do it. Amen? Yes. And I understand if God asks you something, he'll make a way for you to do it, so I'm not discounting that. I'm just, just saying sometimes God wants you to do something and he's giving you every opportunity to be prepared. We need to make sure we're prepared for it. Amen? Right. Yeah. This one would freak me out. Genesis 6. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and a coat and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof and opening one cubit high all around. That's a lot of work. It's a lot of dedication. It's a lot of time. Noah's probably a pretty smart, strong guy. This picture here is of the ark in, uh, where it is? Uh, somewhere in the Midwest. Kentucky, where they were building it. And you're going to see it's massive. They did their best to make it as much of scale as possible. They have machines. They have forklifts. Right. They have power tools. Yeah. Right. No one was the man. Yeah. Yeah. He needed to be healthy to do that. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. You have Nehemiah rebuilding this wall. Nehemiah 4.6 says, So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached habit site for the people worked with all their heart. You know, Nehemiah led this project to rebuild the wall. Um, in there, he had instructions for them that they couldn't just build. They had to have one hand building and the other hand ready to fight, right? They were constantly working. That there was no break time, right? It was, they had to be on alert. They had to be healthy to do it. Paul was a tent maker. 
in the Bible, he made tents a lot to uh, provide for himself. Tent making, from what I understand, making it. He had pretty strong hands that he do things. Jesus was a carpenter. I know anything about carpenters. They don't really have these fair, nice computer keyboard hands. <laughs> right? They usually have some pretty big biceps. They have work that they do. Labor, right? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Are his sisters here? He was recognized as more than just the person. He was recognized as a carpenter. Amen? My understanding is he was a rugged man. Not typically what we see painted in pictures. I kind of like that. He's a man's man. So I just showed you some examples. Just nicely give you simple things in your mind as you go throughout the week to say, hey, you know what? There's a reason why God has asked you to take care of the temple. Because in God's will, there's work. Yeah. Right? Sure. Sure. Proverbs 3, verse 7 advises us, says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. We have direct instructions here to fear the Lord and shun evil. For what purpose? For bringing health to your body. For keeping it nourished. Amen? Yeah. God desires for us to live in health. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. For the sake of well-being. So taking care of ourselves is, is in my mind, and what I can see here in the scripture, it's not selfish, but rather it's just it's an essential part for you, for your spiritual growth. Um, I like to repeat the phrase, you can't pour from an empty cup, because I think it's such a simple example of that if you're going to do work, you have to be, have something inside of you to do that work. Amen? Yeah. Just as Jesus commanded us to love our neighbors as ourselves in Mark, you must also first love and take care of yourself effectively in order to serve others. Mm -hmm. And so practicing self-care, which should involve lots of activities, I'm not going to give you a whole bunch Give some examples, but I'm not here to tell you how to do self care and pamper yourself. That's, that's not my purpose. Right. But I do want to remind yourself that Jesus himself saw solitude and rest. So I picked this picture because this is this picture is peace in my mind. Yeah. I always talk about, you know, if I really want to pray, if I really want to connect with God, I like to be on top of the mountain. He can be there with me, it doesn't really matter because when I'm up there, I'm in God's nature. I feel connected. I feel like I can pray better. And it hit me while I was preparing this of, well, Jesus went up to the mountain, right? And Moses went up to the mountain, right? Mm -hmm. I think we should all take a hike and go to the mountain. Let's go. <laughs> but there's a reason why Jesus went to include himself, right? Yeah. So he could take care of himself and his, his, his own mental and, and get connected and pray to God. Amen. I think let's fast forward a little bit. So there's definitely I'm not going through all but you know, one of the important things is, is mental health. And so we talked about the physical. You gotta talk about your mind too. Um, there's a scripture, actually might be later in my notes, but that talks about how you should think, right? What you should think on, what you should allow into your brain, right? Yeah. And so don't neglect that. Yeah. Right. Neglecting prayer, neglecting the study of God's word, that can result in your stagnation. So let's just quickly run through a couple, a couple key things, right? So um, just some practical ways to prioritize your own self-care, right? So one, physical. Take care of your physical health is an act of respect. How do you do that? 
Simple. However it works for you, exercise, nutrition, rest. It's only good simple. But I like the fact that God tells you to take care of your temple. Yeah. Resting is important. You yeah. all have God permission to sleep tonight. Huh. That's great. Mental, your minds are precious gifts. Here it is. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are just? What sort of things are pure? Whatsoever things are lovely, who whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Paul here has encouraged us to focus our minds on positive and uplifting thoughts guarding against negativity. Yeah. There's there's so much stuff that many times people think about. Um, I'm fully aware I'm preaching to you on a, a self-care, self-help, be positive thoughts message. I get it. I understand it. A lot of times people talk about this is all square me. I'm like, oh, it's, it's fake. This scripture to me is less, well, obviously the whole scripture is important. But there's a purpose in him telling you to think on these things. Yes. yes. Right. Is it good to think on those things? Yes. It's going to benefit you. Yes. But what is it doing? It's guarding you against the enemy, putting negative stuff in you. It's guarding you against the things that are going to take your soul and hurt your soul. Yeah. And yeah. It's telling you where to focus. You know, God created us as emotional beings, and it's important to acknowledge that our emotions also need to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Amen? Proverbs 12, 25 says, Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. You know, in these Proverbs here, it's reminding us that kind words can lift each other up. And I had a message out of last year or two years ago where I talked about that. Um, about where you can just make it a goal of your day to just lift one person up. And I guarantee you'll help lift you up because time works out. Amen? Yes. First Timothy 4 8 says, For bodily exercise profit is little. I'm sure many of you would like me to stop there. It says, But God, this is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that is now and of that which is to come. It'd be great. That, that scripture does say it. You could read it. Finally, I should profit a little. Um, and I read the rest. I kept this in here not because, because I don't think it dis discounts anything that's been said, but I think it's a good warning of, hey, you know, when you, when you do bodily exercise, there is a purpose for it. You want to stay healthy. But there's also a danger of allowing that to become your vanity or your ego, right? right. Um, look at my gains. Right? Uh, I don't have to so, but our bodies are a gift that's been given to us, and so we should invest in it. Amen. Yes. Is Lex still over there? This will be his favorite part. Lex, is your favorite part. Self discipline is essential for your personal growth and empowers you to take intentional steps forward. Proverbs 25, verse 28 says, He that hath no rule over his own spirit. Is like a city that is broken down and without walls. I'm gonna read that again. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Proverbs teaches us that a person that doesn't have self control, there's easy access, right? Motivation is generally described as a willingness to do something. And the problem with mental motivation is that it comes and it goes. And that your willingness can also then come and go based on many factors. Right. Motivation tends to lead when the path forward becomes hard. And so the great thing about self-discipline is that it's doing what you need to do when you need to do it, regardless of whether you're willing to. Or yeah. not, really. You simply do it because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so without this, you don't have that protective barrier that Proverbs is talking about. If you're not willing to have the self-discipline, you're like a city without a wall. If you don't have self-control over what you eat, you're more likely to eat the ice cream that I'm going to eat tonight. <laughs> you're more likely to let that poison into your system. 
the carbs, the sweets, the carbs, or the candy, whatever, whatever your thing is. Mine, mine will be candy. I just love candy. You know, self-discipline, it's easy for it to get past you, right? I just use that as a simple example, right? Because we all know that. Alan here says, freedom is born of self-discipline. No individual, no nation can achieve or maintain liberty without self-control. The undisciplined man or woman is a slave to his own weakness. Self-discipline is the defensive wall that can prevent it, like Proverbs tells us. So what happens when you do not have self-control over what you eat? What happens when you do not have self-control over what you watch? What happens when you do not have self-control over what you listen to? Yeah, you're weak. What happens when you don't have self-control over what you allow yourself to think? You have no wall of protection. You're like an open city for whatever wants to come in, comes in and does what it needs to do. Yeah. <laughs> Second Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. Does they sound like a King James Version? God gives us this, that sound mind, that discipline, and not fear, right? Because the discipline can keep fear out, right? Because it helps us think in phrase, right? I'm sure over these past years, how many of you have been overwhelmed by news, social media, posts, whatever happens, right? Constantly puts on your mind, put fear in your mind. Well, discipline lets you say, yeah, I don't need to listen to that. And that's not. I need to be aware. I need to tell no fear. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So there, there's a guy that um, I like. He's a he's a big, awesome dude, ex-guy. And uh, Lexi brought in some stuff for here because he has a phrase that Lexington and I are constantly learning and applying. Um, I have a t-shirt. Lexi is excited to talk about. So he brought his t-shirt in. T-shirt in. The guy's name is Jocko, but he has a phrase that's called which you can't see it, but it's on Lex's thing here. You want to tell them what it says? No? Okay. It says discipline equals freedom. And yes, I have, I have a t-shirt to go with it. Um, Aristotle is also quoted as saying, through discipline comes freedom. And so by developing the self-discipline, we become more effective in our service to God because we are free from the hurt and the arrows that come at us, that we've done what we need to do so we're free to move forward, amen? Right. That we can experience the freedom and peace that comes with aligning ourselves to his word. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yep. So self-discipline is something that is easily obtained. Again, I I'm telling you, it's easy. It's hard. But I'm telling you, it's easy. It's easy. Just by so simply starting very simple goals, right? Goals and priorities. I love talking about that stuff for work. But in the case of this, it's, it's really just about setting those small, easy things to start and building on it, right? I think 80% of all the topics I talk about here, at some point, I say these things, I'm going to say it again, right? If you create daily routines that reinforce positive behavior and habits, it's going to help you. Things like right. read your Bible, yeah. pray, right? Set it at a time. Like, like if, if it's not in your life right now, guess what? Just commit to have self discipline to set apart five minutes every day or five minutes per week to read the Bible. Set aside five minutes every day or five minutes for you, whatever works for you to pray. You just start there and you have the self discipline to do it, and you'll find that that routine will strengthen. It's going to nurture you. It's going to become easier to where you can then become one of those prayer warriors if that's what's in, in line for you, right? Because the discipline, the habit will get you there. Amen? Yeah. Yes. Uh, consistency. Oof. 
Now it's good. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Yes, praise I use the scripture all the time because I'm tempted a lot and there is no way out. Hmm. Because I really want to do the temptation. And so I have to bring the scripture back to say, no, no, actually there is a way around this. There is a way not to give in. Yeah. Amen? Because temptation yes. is going to happen. Right. It's going to come your way. We're all going to be tempted. Yeah. Right? And so sometimes you need to prayerfully develop strategies to overcome them. Whether it's seeking accountability or support from others to encourage you. But I wanted to remind you of the example of Joseph. Story in Genesis, him and Potiphar's wife. Potiphar was pretty insistent going after him. We got to the point where she latched on to him. And the scripture says he tore himself away, left his cloak in her hand, and ran. From the house. And I just wanted to give you that example because in the moment of your temptation, this gives you a good hint of a way to deal with it. Run. If all else fails, just run. Get away from it. Don't stay and continue to be tempted. 99% of all the times I failed in any temptations because I stuck around because I kind of like the temptation. Now let it get inside and do whatever it's going to do. Right? Yeah. Justify it. Let it take control. So don't stay. Even if it means you drop your cloak of authority, even if it means you drop everything you need, just get out of Dodge. It's better than staying. Amen. Right. First Corinthians 10 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except that is common by mankind. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. When you're tempted, he might just provide an avenue for you to run. Look for it and go. Amen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's get forward. Well, let's talk about emotions real quick. Emotional intelligence just refers to your ability to recognize, understand, and manage your own emotions. Anyone hear about that before? Just think it's it's emotions and how to deal with them. How to recognize them in you, how to recognize them in others. Galatians 5, 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, love, suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against their, such there is no law. I'm just skipping, skipping a little bit quicker just for time's sake. So through biblical teaching, we learned the importance of aligning our emotions with godly principles and seeking Him to manage them. Amen? Yes. Anyone ever been anger? Angry? But the fruit of the spirit is anger. It's not in there. No. I wish it was. But it's not. <laughs> uh, we don't go into that, but but we need to manage our emotions. And to do that, you gotta be self-aware. Proverbs 4 23 says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. The scripture is a good reminder that we need to be able to look in our, our heart and look at it diligently to make sure that we truly do understand what we are. Sometimes you need to look in the mirror. Amen? Yes. Not to lament on it, not to like beat yourself down, but just like, oh, man, yeah, I am pretty good over here. Pretty good looking. Oh, God does need to work on me here. Let's work on it, all right? Lamentations 4, or uh, chapter 3, verse 40 says, Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. Self awareness is right here in this verse 40. Search and try your own ways and then turn to the Lord again. Amen. <coughs> Proverbs 16 32 states, Whoever is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he who rules his spirit than he who takes a city. Yeah. This encourages your self control. We yeah. mentioned anger before. If they're slow to it, they're stronger than the mighty and just kicks down the door and takes over the city. Amen? Yes. Psalms 46 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. 
Um, the skill set here is what they call staff and self regulation, which is basically knowing how to manage yourself and calm yourself down. And I love this scripture because sometimes being still is the way to be calm and to allow God to talk to you. Yes. Sometimes it just takes time to stop. Yes. Sometimes we get panicked. Sometimes yes. we start running around, doing a whole bunch of stuff that's not really helping. Yes. But we do it because we gotta be active. Sometimes we just need to stop. Yes. Yes. That's the situation like God talked to you before, amen? Yes. yes. Being still enables you to become mindful and gain perspective because you start observing. You allow God to help you. Amen? Yes. Empathy is the ability to understand and share feelings of others. It involves listening, being sensitive to others' emotions, and showing compassion. Philippians 2 4 advises us and says, Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. Cultivating empathy enables us to build a strong connection with others. And allow God's love to work through us. Amen. Right. So if we're going to seek to understand other perceptions, James 1 19 says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, mm -hmm. slow to speak, mm -hmm. and slow to wrath. Mm -hmm. To increase your empathy, the scripture clearly speaks on two key items. First, listen. Understand their perspective. And then be slow in what you say. Yeah. Amen? Yes. Be thoughtful. Right. The scripture helps to focus on activity by ensuring that our first goal is to hear before we attempt to relate or give encouragement. Yeah. I always I like the example of you know you're, you're walking by at work or the street or something and someone says, Oh hey, how you doing? You go, oh, Stinks right now. We go, oh, that's great. See you later. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Right. Yeah. 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 Happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. And what do you do? Because you know exactly what you expect. You say, hey, how are you doing? What are you going to do when someone says, life is really tough? Right. You're going to go like this. If you're going to be like, uh, you're going to be torn. Are you going to stop? And deal and help? Or are you like, I have something to do, I need to go, right? Yeah. Romans 12 18 says, it says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Mm. Managing relationships sometimes can be hard. It's a good scripture to remind you that your purpose here is to live peaceably. Right. It says, if possible, there are times where it's not possible to live peaceably. Right. Sure. But if possible, live peaceably. And sometimes when it's not possible, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with conflict? And how do you forgive others? Ephesians 4 32 says, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. I ran through these <clears throat> different tips and things about how, how we can form ourselves in these skill sets with the appropriate scripture that brings us to that skill set, right? Yeah. The Bible is like the probably the, the greatest um, life for dummies 101, right? You just got to read it. It gives you some very concrete, simple things to follow up. That I can sell you a ticket to a six thousand dollar seminar that will teach you these things. Mm -hmm. I can do it. Get out there. In fact, I might make one up for you special for that six thousand dollars. But all these things come straight from scriptures. Yeah, they're all there to tell you. Amen. Yes. Yes. Ephesians four three two encourages believers to be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ has forgiven you. You know, Jesus demonstrated the ultimate forgiveness by offering himself. Yeah. He was a sacrifice for our sin, providing that example of unconditional love and forgiveness. Yes. Gratitude also plays a crucial role in your personal growth and your spiritual well-being. Yeah. 
because it shifts your focus from negativity to positivity. Yeah. Amen. That scripture about focus on these things. If you if you go to the self help, they'll tell you, hey, every morning wake up, the first thing you should do is write down three things of gratitude. I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. Right. If you're in a hard situation, things are really tough. Well, why don't you just think about what you're thankful for? Well, I'm breathing. Yep. I have AC. Yeah. Right. Changed your focus. I could be complaining about my tie, <laughs> right, and this shirt. I'm happy I got a tie and a shirt to wear. Amen. 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 I'm going to read a couple of scriptures and I'm going to wrap it up. Colossians 3.13 says, Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Psalms 104 says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Luke 6, 37 says, Judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Yes. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. A little while ago, we talked about how habits can help drive self discipline we need in our lives. And that simple habits can be things like listing those three things that you're thankful for, engaging in an act of kindness for someone, giving a kind word to someone, demonstrating forgiveness or grace. Allowing people to be people. Yeah. It could be just setting aside some dedicated time to pray or set aside some time to be still. <laughs> setting aside time to go hike a mountain or wake up early with a cup of coffee so you can sit there and meditate with the Lord. Whatever it may be for you, when you actually embrace what the Lord wants to do for you in your physical, mental, and spiritual lives, it's going to continually push you and help you grow. Amen? Thank you. Yes. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to close. Um, I hope this wasn't too disjointed for you. I really wanted to just center around just building that personal relationship by first and knowing how to take care of the simple things in your life, your physical being, your mental being and your spiritual being. I'm simply not a really deep guy. I like very simple principles and how to apply them over and over in every situation. Because um, I just firmly believe once you understand the principle, there's many situations that will come your way. And I never ever want to be in a spot where I have to explain every situation. If I can explain a simple principle and I can help my children or any one of you ever just get a simple principle in your life that you can apply everywhere, that's the purpose. And so we saw in our scripture test, in our scripture text today, that our bodies are that temple yeah. and that we do have the responsibility to nurture right. in all three aspects. Amen. Yes. And that ultimately our pursuit of personal growth should be anchored in the deep intimate relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes. For he is the source of abundant life. He is the source of grace. Yes. And in reality, he is your source of spiritual transformation. Amen? Yes. So let's just remember that the journey does require dedication. It does require self-discipline. It does require a general desire to pursue God and have his presence in your life. Yes. And that if you prioritize these things, you make it. You make it. So I encourage you to pick one of these things we talked about that and say, hey, you know what? I don't do that. And just implement it for 90 days. It'll work. It's been proven. Right? That's that's how that's how we are. That's how we're wired. That's how we're made. So 
I just want to encourage you tonight. Take care of yourself. That's it. Simple. Yes. If you're gonna help others, make sure you're healthy. Make sure you're well. Make sure you can. And I guarantee you, God will respect you, encourage you, and provide you in many situations to utilize uh, your gifts for him. Amen. Yes. I mean, I feel like Sam just pray for prayer and dismissed. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing us here tonight. Thank you for the congregation's patience for listening, but also for taking your word and putting our hearts. Pray that we touch each one of us. Thank you for your love, care, and guidance for us. Pray that will help us to make sure that your temple is clean, holy, strong, and ready for whatever we have for us. In Jesus' name. Amen.